All right, welcome to another episode from the Chart Reader. So I think this is a really interesting three right here. You can see Maxon on the screen, Holo is the second one, and then Lunar's the third one, all right? Each of these three had really good days. You can see this was 14%. I think the other two were, were either at least this much or even higher, all right? All three were very strong gains today. All three had pretty monster volume today too, but, I'm a little 50-50 on, I think, just about all three. I think Lunar has the best shot. And if you watch my live video, you know what I was looking for and it just didn't, uh, Lunar. Um, and again, I'll go into the details shortly. Like, that's a monster, monster candle. Did way better than yesterday. We do smash, smash, smash that resistance. I wish we did a little better compared to this, what, this late February candle. All right, and I'll get to that shortly. Oh, I just wish we did just a little bit more. Look, things look good down here, right? When you look at Maxon, things look not that bad to arguably good down there. Even Holo, when you look, look at that 14% gain, monster 100 million plus, that ain't too, too bad right here. But all three are just a little 50-50. And again, the best thing I always say, right? I never use the words buy, sell, hold, but I'm always here saying set a high criteria, right? You work hard for your money, make these stocks work hard for your money as well, right? That's always the goal, all right? So before we do go any further though, and I give you more of my thoughts and opinions, what are we gonna do? Same thing we always do, right? We're gonna take a look at the daily and the weekly to see how these things are setting up short term. We have our five moving averages. Um, there's a few, I'm gonna zoom in because I don't want you to think about 44 cents when we're down here at 10, right? But there are some horizontal support and resistance lines that I do draw manually myself. And then when we are done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, if you can, please subscribe to this channel. Share this video online with your friends. Comment good or bad if you disagree. Look, anything you can do helps so, so much with these YouTube algorithms. But for real, just being here, giving me your time, oh, I'm so grateful for it, all right? So um, I started the video with them. I say it again. There are a lot of things here that look really good. I think it's important to set a high criteria and, oh man, I am just not too sure. And the biggest thing, and I hope you know it before I'm about to say it, right? That 20 moving average, all right? Look, I like that it seems like we're over the eight moving average, right? I like that this was a real nice candle after two back-to-back -back dojis, right? I generally say when you see a doji, the next one after is the truth. This is even more indecision than that one. That's a nice gap up and a decent close right there, right? I think the issue is, and you can see it on the screen, let me just keep zooming out, keep zooming out. All right, there's a little bit of a beat, but I mean, I'm just still zooming out. There's a little bit of a beat right there. There's a, I guess a longer one, but look, I mean, this is all of 2024. In all of 2024, it actually starts right here, so we're basically losing it. There's like what, let's call that six. I'll call that 20, I don't even think it's 20. And then there's like another five right there, right? So I'm gonna change that six to a five. There's been about 30 candles, 30 days from January through today where we've been over the eight and the 20, right? So you gotta come, <clears throat> excuse me, you gotta come into this respecting the lines. I always say that, right? And right now, I know we're close. I know that's a good gap up. I know that the volume broke the, the 50 day line. I know that's a really nice divergence right there. I know I see the same green over red right there. I also know I gotta respect the lines, right? So look, I see we're going up a little bit after hours. Let me at least just flash that really quickly. I do see that right there, right? But ultimately, we gotta get into that 12 cent world. And actually, I like 12 a lot. You can see, again, I wish I had more decimals, right? But it's 11, 11, 11, 12's like right here. 12 is a nice little distance above that orange line. 12 actually puts us, because you can see it in the box over there, this close, this opens and closes at 11, right? So 12 cents puts us over this green, 
puts us in this red, 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 green, 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 red, red, red candle. And hey, if we can get to 12, I'll set an alert too. Look, an alert is not an immediate buy. It's definitely a come check out the charts. But if we can get to 12, I think there's a real good shot that we'll run to the 50 moving average. I'm actually gonna delete this 16 line. I think the 50 moving average probably matters a little bit more than that 16 line. So if we can trade from here to here, oh man, red, 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 green, 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 red, 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 nothing, 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 green, green, green would be the hope right there. If we can break that 16, oh man, we might be talking 24 cents. I think it's very, very aggressive to think 24 at the moment, but hey, going from even that 12 to 16 is a great move. But yeah, going from where we're at to even that, that 15, 16, oh man, you're talking about a big, big, big gain, right? But, but, but you gotta remember, getting into that 12 is not gonna be easy. All right, if it happens, let's see what it looks like. I just wanna see where the hourly ended. Actually, the hourly is not too bad. Hourly is not too bad. Hourly is making it seem like it wants to get over this, but you can see it right here. That 200 moving average is basically at 12 cents. I'm assuming it's gonna come down. It has to come down a lot actually to 11. I don't know. Again, I'm not here pretending to know the math, right? But um, that's gonna be a little bit of a wall. But yeah, if you can break it on the hourly, there's, there's room on the daily for it to move, all right? So if, that 12 cents doesn't happen, I think we come back to here, basically 10 cents, all right? So um, yeah, it, the, the risk reward isn't bad. I don't think we'll go much lower than nine cents. I would for sure start to worry if you see eight cents, because eight cents puts us under the eight, puts us under this candle and would put us in a very, very scary situation, all right? But yeah, again, get me to 12 cents and I think there's gonna be another four right there. That's a that's a 33% move basically, right? What's the eight moving average right here? Look at that. So the eight moving average on the weekly is 12 cents. The hourly chart has the 200 moving average at 12 cents. That 12 cents won't be easy to break. Now for some, going from 10 to 12 is a beautiful 20% move, right? It just depends on how you trade, what your strategy is, all that, right? So um, I would have my finger on the mouse if you were trying to do something. Um, otherwise, yeah, hopefully 12 goes and, and there's some room for it to run because then you're looking good on the hourly, on the daily, and on the weekly charts, right? So um, I didn't see too, too much news. Let me know if there's any headlines that I missed here. But yeah, I think that's a good summary of Maxon right there. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions, even if you disagree. Let's take a look at Holo. So I will say I think this is the chart I like least of the three. All right, I said earlier I like Lunar the most. I would say Maxon is number two, and then unfortunately, if there's only three, Holo becomes that that last number three spot, all right? And I mean, just, just look at where the, where the candle is sitting, right? We're obviously under all five moving averages. We're obviously under the eight, let alone the 20. At least Maxon was giving me a little bit of a belief that we're trying to use this eight as a support. We're trying to break this. I mean, Holo is looking rough, again, I see that this is monster, monster volume, right? And you've heard me say it all the time. Good volume cures a lot of bad things, right? Believe me, I know that. The thing is, I just, I don't like how these moving averages are sitting. Now look, there's a lot of red. I think I'm gonna lower this line. Let me see where that 36 is sitting. Oh man, I think that 36 cents, oh, I think that was half of that candle. I think that's all that that was. I'm gonna lower it to here. I'm gonna take it to the bottom of this, okay? Oh, that's basically what we tried to wick. I'm surprised we didn't go all the way to that. Even if I draw it a little nicer. Yeah, we never wicked the bottom of that candle. Interesting. I think that alone, okay, sorry, I'm thinking of two things in my head. So I'll, I'll tell you, I'll go back to why I lowered the resistance shortly. I'm surprised our wick didn't go just a little bit higher. Look, that's a red, 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 red stairway on a nice, I mean, a monster, monster, right? Because 50 is what we were looking for. 100 would be double. We added a 20% a more than double, right? So, um, and again, you just saw me zoom out. There is the black abyss of all time lows. Like there is nothing but red, red, red here. I'm surprised that didn't go all the way up. And I think that adds to the difficulty of the A moving average just in my head, all right? But yeah, I lowered this 29, number one, because we were basically sitting at the 20 moving average. And I always say, I, I like the computer generated lines more than my simple human clicks, right? So um, I'll give that line the respect up there. I took the bottom 
of this candle. Obviously, this is the bigger one, but I'm just giving this little guy a little more respect. I don't know why. I think it's probably because of these two dojis right there. I think that those two dojis were probably more important than this big, big candle or even that one. I think that's probably what it was. Nonetheless, that's where I'm drawing it and hey, it lined up pretty well there, right? But the point of everything I was trying to say is look, if we can get over 25 cents, I think there's maybe a shot at 29. I actually think breaking this 29 might be a little difficult. Now, someone might disagree with me because look, what, what this thing does actually know how to do is kind of go back to back with some good volumes. Look, even that one right there, right? I, I know that doesn't look great, but that's not bad back to back. You're at least still over the lines, right? Now, we've seen the pump and dumps not that long ago, but at least in the in the closer time frames, volume's been decently back to back. So you can make the argument that a volume holds, and I think that's what I'm probably gonna end this on. Look, I think, think if we can get like 95 million at the bare minimum, let's take out our trusty calculator, uh, it, it, bare minimum, I obviously need more and I'm gonna give you the more number, right? But I need 95 million shares traded in a seven hour day. You're looking for basically 14 million in the first hour, as close to 30 in the second hour, 30 million shares as you can, all right? What we really need is, a, is, a, is an echo of that. All right, I think that's realistic because I can see that's also, we've done that roughly speaking right there. So 140s, all right? If we can get 100, uh, I think that's divisible, right? If we can get 140 million shares in a seven hour day, that's what I thought it was. We need, so we're basically looking for 30 to 40 million shares in two hours. If we can be in that range, I think there's reason to believe we might make a shot at 29, 29 cents. Otherwise, I don't like under all five moving averages. I don't like under the eight and the 20. I don't like seeing how long this thing was under the eight. I can keep zoom, goodness, I can keep zooming. It went, I can keep zooming out. It lost the eight in February. And it really only made one good attempt since then. Now, again, you can argue, hey, the second one should be close and like it might be close enough to this. What I'm seeing is a lot worse of a situation of under the eight and the 20 than we saw with Max. And so again, I think this one's lasts for a reason, but if volume comes and hey, Holo can do it with the volume, you know, volume, like I said, cures all bad, all right? So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions, even if you disagree. I wanna end it on Lunar. Lunar is a very, very interesting ticker. And I actually covered this one not that long ago, all right? Um, you can see it, you break all five and you fly, but it wasn't the prettiest. And that's one thing I did mention on the last video. You, you get over it, but you can't really confirm. None of these are really good. Those are the only two decent back-to-back -back candles, but they're not even that good enough. And then you get a bunch of like, actually those two are actually relatively scary as well, right? But you hear me say it all the time. If you can stay over the eight and the 20, good things happen. And if you're gonna lose the eight, the 20 should be there to catch you, right? So again, I like just, just doesn't happen all the time, right? I'm not pretending that this is a 100% thing, but I like when, it, when the charts look like they should, right? This pop was an interesting one because there was a monster, monster headline. Look, I have absolutely no idea who Intuitive Machines Inc. is, but I for sure know who NASA is, right? And if you get connected with a big reputable name as a small no one, and I say that with all due respect to anyone holding that, right? Because maybe they are someone and I'm completely wrong. But, you know, when you get a NASA level connection, that is essentially like an Amazon and NVIDIA or whatever, right? Like if you're going to do some science stuff and NASA says, take some billions because I like your science. Yeah, I think you got some decent science right there, right? So... Um, that was a big, big headline. And you know, there's a, there's a, there's a very famous stock saying you buy the rumor, sell the news. I think that is actually what happened yesterday. Look, I know it looks like a 38% gain, but this thing opens at $8 and 35 cents and then falls almost a full dollar to just under 750.
right? Like that, that was a pretty scary trade. Knock on wood, good things happen today. And I'll talk about what that makes me think about tomorrow, right? But um, day of was a little scary. I think day of, and it, it basically happened after hours, right? After hours, the news drops. So day of actually meant the next day, which was the first trading day, right? But buy the rumor, sell the news. That's basically what happened. People buy the uh, bought the rumor on the on the gap up after hours. Once the regular hours hit, it, it fell and they sold the news, right? Today held, today held nicely. Number one, we gapped up, right? I just mentioned we closed around 750. You can see 747. We opened today about 20 cents higher and then we just kept running. We break that resistance right there and we keep going, right? The one thing I mentioned earlier and the one thing I wish was just a little better. So, I mean, this is a beautiful channel from 840 to 1025. And I know on the Discord this morning, 1025, I said, it's my next resistance line. We were talking about Lunar, right? So it smelled like 1024 for sure. I know that's a real high RSI. I've seen this thing run to a 92 RSI even this year, right? Um, and again, I talked about the importance of the news. The one thing I wanted to see, so when I click right here, you can see this February 20th candle opens at $9.45, so this line right here. I really wanted this to close a penny higher. I wanted us to close at 9.46 for me to just think red, 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 gr I mean, sorry, green, 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 red, 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 green, 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 run. That 945 might be a tough resistance, all right? I'm gonna set an alert. Again, an alert's not an immediate notification. I'm even gonna do two cents. I don't need that third penny. Let me know if we get over 945. Let me know if we can break into that candle. Oh man, that could be some interesting things right there, all right? Let's look at the hourly. Where's the hourly at? Uh, I mean, hourly is at the 80, but that's not bad. I'm still kind of seeing a baby maybe divergence. Again, regardless, right? Regardless, let's just keep it on the daily because that's that's what, what the bread and butter is here. Get me into this candle. 1025 is next. I don't have another line up. And that next line up might be a silly line. Where are you at? 12, not silly just yet. 12 is the next line up. Okay, cool. I think that's not bad. Now, this can fall to 840. Truth be told, and again, I'm guessing the math right now, right? But if I had to guess, the eight's probably gonna come to like right bearish. This thing can actually probably fall all the way down to like 720 and still be bullish. Personally, I don't wanna lose 840. Um, I don't think we're gonna go any lower than 770 though. I think the bottom of this green should hold pretty well. Um, when you look at the weekly, I mean, this is a pretty gnarly weekly, right? This stock has not been alive for 200 weeks. When I click here, there is no purple average 200 line, right? So we are testing a break of all the moving averages. We actually did it once before this year as well, right? So this is the second attempt. And the second attempt is with better volume, arguably, right? At the minimum, it's higher. And we still got one more day of trading, right? So we're not gonna go negative, I'll tell you that. We're gonna go at least up a little bit more, right? So um, this is the biggest week of trading for the stock. <sighs> Next week can go pretty gnarly, especially because look how new that line is, right? Like from here to here is not 100 right? Like there's still a lot more to go before we get to that 200th week. So we might be making a break of all the moving averages on the weekly. We are already over all the moving averages on the, on the daily. And clearly this thing did some silly things before, right? I think it's a little premature to think above 1260. But yeah, I mean, once you break that, you're talking 16 and then the 16 lines, the crazy line. All right. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions, even if you disagree. Oh, I appreciate you so, so much.